Hey, it's Azure Friday. We're talking to Corey Sanders from the Virtual Machine team. Hello. Hello, hello. Okay, so I configured my virtual machine and made it larger. Yep. I made it larger. I went from an extra small to a small because That's right. he because extra, size does matter. Extra small <laughs> is allowed one data disk. Yes, that's right. Small allows two. Two. Okay. Medium four. How would you I know? See that? How that how would I know? Going? How would I know that? Uh, we actually we do have a, a site up there. I think there's um, there's probably more that we could do showing this here in the portal. Because that seems have, like a really useful thing to yeah, know. Yeah, that's right. So we have a we have sort of the details on the MSDN site of exactly all the configurations. So mm -hmm. like here you see core and memory, but we also talk about on that site what your network speed out is mm -hmm. and how many disks you can attach. So there's a little bit more detail to those limitations. Right. Um, now if I scroll, if I want, I'm on the dashboard link here and I scroll down. Yeah. Here it shows me how many cores I have. I have one. Yep. What does this mean? That's a great question. So that is your total quota, right? So this account, you have a quota of 20 cores. Uh, and so that's sort of the default quota that you start with. And this is basically saying there's four total deployed out of your 20 cores, and this accounts for one of them. So right? when I, you say my account, my subscription? Yes, the subscription, exactly. So my exactly. MSDN subscription has a is limit allowed 20, 20 cores. 20 cores, yes, correct, correct. And why is that? It's it's mostly just, a, uh, in some cases, it's just to sort of protect uh, people from sort of abusing or accidentally deploying too many. You can very easily just call in and say, hey, give me more quota. I'm ready to deploy more things. Oh, right? so this is more of it's a... It's a configurable value. It's it's more of a soft, like, warning line. Right? It's, it's a soft uh, limit. Exactly, exactly. In fact, you can increase that without even calling in. There's a website you click, click, click through oh, and say, really? hey, give me 100 cores or whatever. Oh, okay. So this is like turning on data roaming on my phone yeah, that's internationally. Right. Exactly. Like you could totally do it. You could do it. You just have to you know, double check that that's really what you wanted to do. Okay. Uh, there is a line that you get to where it's actually, hey, we actually need to do a credit check. Uh, but most people, I think, won't hit that line. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> and then I've got disks here. And yeah. I scroll over. Mm -hmm. I can see a couple things. It's a little, little bit uh, hard to read in here. Here's host cache. Yep. And then down here, those are my, where can I get over here? You have to scroll. You have to scroll these over. So go over here and just make your, give, give yourself some more That's room. That's not there. a problem at all. <laughs> um, so those are the okay, actual. Let me take a note. Hold yeah, on. take a note of that. So, well, I mean, I don't really need to see that, but I think the point is I can, though, that's the actual blob. That's right. Of That's the, right. Of the disk. That's right. So this is actually in your storage account. Okay, right? let's, so, prove, let's prove that though. Yeah, so let me go to all items. Okay. Go to storage. Yep. Uh, I've got a couple of storage. I've got Hansel storage. Uh, I've got this. It's going to be those two. And and what these are, the reason why they have such a um, uh, friendly friendly name mm -hmm. uh, is actually their auto generated account. So when you went in and said, "Hey, just create a VM," mm -hmm. uh, we don't require you to have already created a storage account because we felt that that was a little bit cumbersome. So we auto generate account, and that's why. So anything that starts with portal VHDs means the portal, as part of this process, has generated that account for you in the region that you wanted it to I be. I see. In. Yeah. Now I made one in Northern Europe here at some point. Let me look in there and go to containers, VHDs. I have one called Super Fancy Pants. There you go. Uh, that I made in <laughs> Europe a while back. That sounds like a enjoyable can, can I delete <laughs> situation. Can, can I delete the entire container? You can. Like the whole storage account. You can. Of? Assuming that there are no assuming that there are no VMs deployed against it. So let's this is kind of one of the interesting checks we do for you. Cannot uh, delete let's it. Let's see here. Can't do it. Because there's an active disk right. image. So, so I have a VM using these. You do. Correct. Correct. So we basically protect against to making sure that, uh, you know, one of the things that we've noticed uh, with a lot of customers is because it's back in Windows Azure storage, they don't realize that if they delete their storage account, their VM will completely die. And so we try and give people these warnings and let them know. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, I, someone told me once, well, if you delete your virtual machine, you lose all your data. And I was like, that doesn't feel right. Yeah. So I deleted my Northern Europe one. You can see here I have nothing in Northern correct, Europe. Correct, correct. Yeah, right. But I went over to disk. They are listed there. It's still down here. Exactly. So if you went down and you actually said in through here, hey, delete these, then you could go delete your storage account. So this is our way, again, of protecting and making sure uh, that you don't accidentally delete your own thing. So are you saying that if I deleted my Windows VM that we're remoted into right now, Yep. The C drive is still around. The D drive is still around. The, the C drive and any attached disks is still around. But not That's right. the temporary disk. Not the disk. temporary disk, exactly, which is actually the D drive. Which makes sense. Yep. OK. And these are actually going off and deleting. And you can see that that's, uh, that's an, a, an asynchronous thing. Correct. I can, I can go off and do other stuff. That's right. That's right. So if we go back over to storage and go into the West US one and go to containers, mm -hmm. VHDs. Now, this is interesting. This makes me feel a little bit like. If I wasn't careful, I might end up storing a lot of data 
mm. and paying for it. That's right. If that's I'm right. Not, if I'm not paying attention. Yeah, that's right. That's 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 a good point. I think it, it is worth making sure that you are keeping track. Now, the nice thing about what we do in Windows Azure, uh, which is pretty different actually from from what a, a lot of our competitors do, is for all of these accounts, you only pay for what you're actually using. So, you know, when we looked inside your virtual machine and it said, okay, up to 127 gig, mm -hmm. but you were only using 25 of those gig or 20 of those gig, right. you actually are only paying in storage for that 20 gig, even though your disk goes up to 127 gig. The, the, reason, the way we do that is actually Windows Azure storage is uh, very sparse, and so only things that are written to are going to be saved back in Windows Azure storage, uh, which also means even mm. if you fill it up and then delete it, we've recently added the ability to go trim that back so that you're again only only paying for what you're using. So that's a 127 gig disk, but it only has like 20 or 30 gigs on it. That's right. And that's what I. You're pay only for. paying for 20 or 30 gig then. Now I'm noticing here that it says last modified. Yep. Like <clears> now. <throat> mm -hmm. So that makes me feel like, well, that okay, that's the data disk, and that's right. that one. You're writing to it right now. These this one ones was May, here. Huh? These ones here have weird names though. Uh, though, is that my Linux VM, and why does it have a weird name? Let's see here. How can I find out what virtual machine uses that? Because it's clear that it's being used right this moment. You probably would want to go back through your virtual machines. Oh, and, and then see and, the and name. Exactly, okay. and cross So then this yep. one here hasn't been touched since May. Yeah, it's, it means you're not booting from it. You could probably delete it if you're... Delete it or go and see if I have a shut down virtual machine. Correct. If Correct. a virtual machine is shut down, do I have to pay for it? No, you're not paying for it. So when those virtual machines are shut down, uh, in similar to just the disk being stored off in Windows Azure Stored, they're mm -hmm. just sort of dormant, uh, ready for you to restart them. Okay. Yeah. So we rebooted this last video, and now I suddenly have uh, a, a 2 gigahertz and more RAM. That's right. I went from extra small to small. That's right. And I got an error before when I added an empty disk. Let's try again. So on my SQL here, I'm going to add a, a 2 gig disk. You see that the add not empty disk option went away because you just deleted those disks. Those are your options to add were those ones that you just deleted. Oh, yeah, 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 you're exactly. right. Hang on a second. You're right. It used to say it used to add. Say add disk. I don't have an existing yeah, You disk. deleted them. You just did. Yep. Oh, and I hope, hope there was nothing important yeah, on those. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, well. My fancy pants. I don't know what could be know. important on this those. Is a problem. <laughs> so adding an empty disk. So it's, it's making a VHD. That's right. In my storage Correct, account. correct. So, uh, I mean, the, the real underlying technology is pretty simple. Uh, you know, the portal and, and through the API, it goes in and just creates a blank VHD directly mm -hmm. in your storage account um, and uh, with an auto-generated name. So those funky names that you saw are likely similar experience where you've added a blank disk. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it will pop up in here. Now, the key is that it pops up because we want to support both Windows and Linux. Right. We don't format it for you, right? So we want to make sure that, that you're going to choose the formatting. If you're running on Linux, it's going to be formatted in a different way than if you're running on Windows. So it comes in actually as a completely empty VHD. Okay. Uh, and so you have to then online it as part of your process to bring it into the VM. Would you say that this is like adding a physical disk? Correct. Correct. It's like not, a blank, exactly. Not a file system. Correct. Exactly right. So you basically just imagine someone in the data center plugging in some disk into your into your machine. Okay. So now I go down here, and I see data disk. That's yep. this new one Correct. here. Correct. And you can That's actually you can kind of see embedded in the 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 GUID you made the for date. the date, which yep. is kind of funny. And if I go over to my system here, and I go into the D drive. I don't see anything. You don't see any. That's right. I mean, they're, they're, go to my computer. So right. I'm going to guess here. Let me see if I get this right. If I go and I'm right click on my computer and say manage. Okay. So far, so good. Because if I put a physical disk into my computer, it'll show up in disk management. Exactly. But not in my computer because it has no, it has no um, uh, drive letter. That's right. Oh, oh look, oh, it even found okay. it for you. So it's popped up a note here. Let me zoom in on that. You must initialize a disk. Now I'm going to panic here and make sure that this is not. It's not telling me anything like, are you sure that's the right disk? Disk three. Disk three. Okay. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. I come down here and look at the chart. There's my C drive. There's my MySQL data. Ah. There you go, two gig. Okay, so I'm a, if I remember how to do this, I say new simple volume. That's right. And perfect. Ah, there you go. What it's drive e, e drive. Now, could I mount it as an NTFS folder you sure somewhere could. else? Yeah, okay. of course. Of course. So we'll just say S for Scott. Uh, and okay, name it whatever you want. Format it. Yep. That's cool. So that's what going off and doing that stuff. It's pretty quick so here. So this is kind of funny. It, it, it really is a very convincing lie in the sense of that's what's so great about virtual machines. Yeah. Windows 2008 R2, what I happen to be running here, it doesn't know what's going on. It thinks it the disk care. just popped in. Exactly. Somebody plugged in a disk. Exactly. And I like that I didn't have go. to reboot. Yeah. 
I was a little worried about that. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I just that, no, it was actually one of the areas that we said you cannot have to reboot to get yeah. the So look at that. VMs so now I've just done that. Yeah. So that makes me think that I could have um, graphical resources yeah. or logs or caching. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff yeah. that I may have. I could upload that into storage. Yeah. If I have a VHD that I make locally and upload it, yeah. does it have to load into that, that auto-generated portal? No, no, uh, no. As long as it's in your storage account, you can mount it as, and you add it as a disk, you can mount it, uh, mount it directly to these VMs. Very cool. Yeah. So now I have 500, 1,000, 1,500 yeah. potential IOPS. Correct, correct. Very cool. The one thing I will say that, uh, you know, a mistake that I think you've made here uh, oh, is, uh, you, you know, you created this disk with just 2 gig, right? The fact that these are lossy, and I'm sorry, sparse, excuse me, why not make it much bigger? Because you're only going to pay if you use it. Uh -huh. So you might as well start with the maximum size, which is actually one terabyte. So you know, really? uh, go up to one hundred two four. You recommend? I always start with one hundred two four. That you should make a giant. I always disk. start with yeah, because because you know what we talked about last time. The resize process. It's two step. It's a little bit cumbersome. Just go start big. There's no reason not to. You're not paying for it. It would be nice if I could be told that in the portal? somehow in yeah. the portal. Like, Maybe the defaults could be one no, gig or something, or one terabyte. I think me. that I'm, I think people will be more likely to go small out, mm. of, out of fear. So that dialogue, put a little. You only pay for what this, you. This little end pop up, up here. Yeah. Tell me that. Hey, you're only paying for what you're that's using. Good, that's that good would feedback. be huge. Okay. All right. I'll fix that up. It's Azure Friday. Thanks, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.